दोस्तों नमस्कार आई हैव फॉर यू टूडे अ शॉर्ट स्टोरी टाइटल्ड टोपैज रिटन बाय फेमस ऑथर रस्किन बॉन्ड रस्किन बॉन्ड एज वी ऑल नो इज एन इंडियन ऑथर ऑफ ब्रिटिश डिसेंट ही हैज मेड एग्जैम्पलरी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इन द फील्ड ऑफ चिल्ड्रंस बुक्स एंड इवन घो स्टोरीज टोपैज इज वन ऑफ वन सच स्टोरी दैट आई पिक्ट अप फॉर यू द स्टोरी इज सेट अप इन द बैकड्रॉप ऑफ हिमालयाज it is written in first person where at a point the narrator or the protagonist confirms he is a he is a writer and that in a way also confirms that it is the author himself narrating the story the story opens in the pine clad slopes of the himalayas the protagonist is in his room listening to some music that uh, reminds him of the strains of the blue uh, danube and concurrently the wonderful uh, sight of uh, the pine clad slopes of himalayas he has a new record player with old records that he has uh, picked up uh, from the junk shop uh, behind the mall below the pines there are oaks surprisingly one oak tree in particular catches his eyes it is the biggest of the lot and stands by itself on on a little hillock below his cottage there is a breeze but not uh, strong enough uh, to sway its uh, heavy branches there is also something moving swinging gently uh, from the tree keeping pace with the music of the waltz dancing it appears as if uh, someone is hanging from the tree a rope oscillates in the breeze when a dead body uh, turns uh, slowly and slowly turns this way and that way is when he sees the face of a girl her hanging her hair hanging loose her eyes uh, sightless hands and feet limp just uh, turning turning while the waltz plays on he turns off the player and runs downstairs down the path through the trees and on to the grassy uh, hillock where the big oak stood a long tailed magpie takes fright and flies out from the branches uh, swooping low across the ravine In the tree there is no one a great uh, branch extends halfway across the hillock and it is possible for him to reach up and touch it but a girl could not have reached uh, with without climbing the tree he thinks as he stands there gazing at the branches someone uh, speaks to him from behind what are you looking at he swings around only to see a girl standing around in the clearing facing him a girl of 17 or 18 alive healthy with uh, bright eyes and a tantalizing smile she is indeed lovely to look at uh, he hadn't seen such a pretty girl uh, in years you startled me he says you came up so unexpectedly he added Did you see anything in the tree? she asked. I thought I saw someone from my window. Uh, that's why I came down. Did you see anything? said the writer. Oh no. she exclaimed and shook her head, the smile escaping her face uh, for a moment. I don't see anything, but other people do sometimes. What do they see? asked the writer. My sister, she replied. Your sister rebounded the writer. Yes, she hanged herself from this tree. It was many years ago, so sometimes you uh, can see her hanging there. She answered in a mechanical fashion. After which they moved some distance away from the tree, above the hillock on a disused private tennis court was a small stone bench. She sat on it. 
uh, and after a moment, a uh, moment's hesitation, uh, even the writer sat beside her. Do you live close by? He asked. Further up the hill. My father has a, a small bakery. She then discloses her name as Hamida. She also says she has two younger brothers. You must have been quite small when your sister died, says the writer. Yes, but I remember her. She was pretty. Like you, inter- interjected uh, the writer. She laughs in disbelief. Oh, I am nothing to her. You should have seen my sister. Uh, why did she kill herself? Because she did not want to live. She was uh, to have been married, but she loved someone else. Someone who was not of our community. It's an old story and the end is always sad, isn't it? Not always. But what happened to the boy, the one uh, she loved? Did he kill himself too? Asked the writer. No, he took up a job in some other uh, place. Jobs are not easy to get, are they? I don't know. I have never tried one. Then what do you do? I write stories, said the writer. Do people buy stories? Why not? If your father can sell bread, I can sell uh, stories. People have to have bread, but they can live without stories. No, Hamida, you're wrong. People can live. People can't live without stories. By now, infatuation had made way in the writer's uh, heart uh, for Hamida. He uh, could help uh, loving her, although no fierce desire or passion had taken hold, of, taken hold of him. He was happy by just looking at her, watch her smile. Uh, she sat on the grass uh, outside his cottage, her lips stained with uh, the juice of wild bilberries. She chatted away about her friends, her clothes, her favorite things. Won't your parents mind if you uh, keep coming here every day? The writer asked. I've told them, you're teaching me. Teaching you what? He asked. They did not ask, so you can tell me stories. As a result, the writer uh, told us some stories. It was midsummer. The sun glinted on the, on the ring she wore on her third finger. A translucent gold topaz, uh, very pretty, set in uh, silver. That's a pretty ring, remarked the writer. You wear it, she said, impulsively removing it from her hand. It'll give you good thoughts. It'll also help you to write better stories. She slipped it on the writer's little finger. I'll wear it for a few days, he said. Then you must uh, let me uh, give it back to you, he added. On a day that promised uh, rain, the writer took the path down to the stream at the bottom of the hill. There he found Hamida gathering ferns from the shady places along the rocky ledges above the water. What will you do with them? He asked. This is a special uh, kind of fern. Uh, You can cook it as a vegetable. Is it tasty? He asked. No, but it is uh, good for rheumatism. Do you suffer from rheumatism? Oh, of course not. Uh, They are for my uh, grandmother. Uh, She is very old, Uh, she said. There are more ferns further upstream, he said, but we'll have to uh, get into the water. So they remove their shoes and start paddling up the stream. Uh, the, the ravine becomes uh, shadier and narrower until the sun is completely shut down. The ferns have grown right down up to the water's uh, edge. They bend to pick them up but instead uh, find themselves in each other's uh, arms and sink slowly as if in a dream into the soft bed of ferns while overhearing a whistling thrush burst out in dark sweet song. It isn't time that's passing by. It seemed to say, it is you and I, it is you and I. Post that the writer waits for her the following day, but she doesn't appear. Several days pass without he being able to see her. Is she sick? Has she been kept at home? Has she been sent away? Uh, He doesn't know uh, where uh, she lives, 
so he cannot ask anyone and if at all he is able to ask what would he ask then one day he sees a boy uh, delivering uh, bread and pastries at the little uh, tea shop about a mile down the road from the upward slant of his eyes uh, there is a slight resemblance uh, with uh, hamida as he leaves the shop the writer follows him up the hill and uh, when he comes uh, uh, abreast of him he asks do you have your own bakery he nods cheerfully yes do you want anything bread biscuits cakes i can bring them all uh, to your house oh of course but uh, don't you have a sister a girl called uh, hamida his expression suddenly changes he is no longer friendly he looks puzzled and slightly apprehensive why do you want to know because i have seen her for some time now replies the writer we have not seen her either do you mean uh, do you mean she has gone away didn't you know you must have been away for a long time it is many years uh, since uh, she died she killed herself you did not hear about it said the boy but uh, wasn't that her sister your uh, other sister asked the writer i had only one sister hamida and uh, she died when i was very young it's an old story ask someone else about it he'll tell you with that he turned and uh, quickened his pace and the writer was left standing in the middle of the road with his head full of questions that uh, had no answers that night there was a sun- thunderstorm writer's bedroom uh, kept uh, writer's uh, bedroom window kept banging in the wind he got up to close it and as he looked out there was a flash of lightning and he saw that same frail body again swinging from the oak tree he tried to make out the features but the head hung down and the hair was blowing in the wind was it all a dream he thought to himself it was impossible to say but the topaz ring the topaz ring uh, on him glowed softly in the darkness and a whisper from the forest seemed to say it isn't that passing by my friend it isn't that passing by my friend it is you and i it is you and i and that's how this uh, story ends uh, it gives you a little homework also that's all so that's all uh, for today friends it's a neat little story with a tinge of uh, enigma for you to discover i would give the story 7 out of 10 goodbye and see you soon